It's the Got Cyber Show, starring Ben McGee. Oh, wait, I'm in the wrong set? Oh, this is the right one. Well, welcome to the Got Cyber Show. I'm your guy, Ben McGee, President and CEO of CyberProtects. If you don't know anything about us, well, this next 45 minutes or so, we'll tell you a whole bunch about what we have to offer. Here at CyberProtects, we do cybersecurity training of the advanced kind. So hands-on and technical with labs for you to be able to go and hunker down and play around with different tools. We also have our online learning management system called the Cyber Ninja. So over 40,000 people have used our Cyber Ninja software, and we're excited to be offering that up to you today as well. If you'd like to get a t-shirt, reach out to us. We are going to be giving away a t-shirt today for anybody who is interested. Um, in addition to not only the training, we offer software security and development of software. And in addition to that, we do the managed services. So if you need things like DFARS compliance or CMMC compliance or possibly the risk management framework help, reach out to us. We'll be more than happy to come and give you a free consultation. So we got an action-packed day full of fun and excitement for you, and we're excited that you joined us today. We're going to jump in to talk about So You Want to Be a Hacker. And when we jump into this today, you'll find out that there's different types of hackers that are out there. There's all sorts of things that they're on the prowl for, and we hope you enjoy this show today. A lot of people ask us what tools we need to use in order to become an ethical hacker. Well, it's important that you receive permission first, and we've already talked a little bit about that today. But some of the different phases of an ethical hacking or penetration test will involve the following. Things like scanning, being able to gain access, maintaining access, and then clearing your tracks. Each one of those can be broken down a little bit further. Scanning, there's a pre-attack phase where you're going out and actually looking for the specific information that can be gathered during reconnaissance. Next, we'll go out and scan for popular ports that may be open using network mappers or ping tools, maybe vulnerability scanners. And then we'll try to extract as much information like live systems, ports, um, operating system details, or systems uptime. The next hacking phase is gaining access. So now that we've done a little bit of scanning and reconnaissance, we should be able to obtain what kind of operating system or application the computer or network is using. And gaining access from that point would be able to land us on the operating system level or the application or network level. From there, we can try to escalate privileges to obtain complete control of the system. And from that, we need to be able to use password cracking techniques, maybe buffer overflows, denial of service attacks, or things like session hijacking. Once we're on the system, then it's time to see how can we maintain access. So can we gain ownership of the system? If so, then can we plant a way to phone back to us, like a backdoor or a rootkit or maybe a Trojan? From there, maybe we can upload or download or maybe manipulate any type of data applications or configurations that are on the owned system that we have with the intent that we can launch further attacks. And then finally, the last phase that we're going to jump into really quickly is the clearing of tracks. What can we do to make sure that we don't get caught? Again, from an ethical hacking standpoint, how can we hide the malicious acts? How can we make sure that we continue to have access to the victim's machines and remain unnoticed? And from that, be able to find out where the logs are to either suspend or overwrite the logs to avoid any type of suspicion. So one of the most popular ways that you can do footprinting is through using search engines. 
asking Dr. Google to extract information about a target, like what type of technology platform it's using, employee details, maybe looking for login pages. You can go in and actually use Google in an advanced search operation and be able to get complex queries to be able to find, filter, and sort specific information about a target. So using search engines is definitely a great tool for an ethical hacker. Another easy way that an attacker will go out and gather information about a target will be on social networking sites. Things like Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, and the like. We can also go out to places like Twitter and use tools like PIPL, Intellius, or Spokio to allow us to gather intelligence on a target. One of the easiest ways for us to find information about a company when we're going through and been paid to do an assessment on that company is to go out to their job site to see what exactly are the jobs that they're looking for. Is there any hardware listed? What about software? So going out to different job websites like Indeed.com, CareerBuilder, Dice, LinkedIn, or Monster is definitely something to think about when you're going through footprint in the network. We can determine the operating system using tools like Netcraft or Shodan or any other things that may be available within the Kali Linux distribution. If you're not familiar with that, you can check out one of our other courses. If it's a website that is interesting that you want to find out information about, you can use tools like Burp Suite or Peros Proxy, maybe something like Firebug or WinHT Track to download the entire website. If scanning wireless networks is in the mission, then you can use net scanning tools like SuperScan or OmniP, things like Megapain or IP Scanner, maybe Fing, maybe Fing or Hack Code on Google, Xanti, Seasploit, Facenif, and PortDroid are other things that you can look at as well. Really, some of the best tools in the tool belt are tools that can help with cracking passwords, escalating privileges, executing applications, hiding files, and then covering our tracks. With cracking passwords, that's one of the reasons why you hear people always tell you to try to have a robust password. So password cracking tools like Kane Enable, Windows Password Recovery Tool, Hashcat, and others. Finding vulnerabilities and exploiting the vulnerabilities allows you to remotely execute applications like things like key loggers and other things that can dial back to you. Maybe you can implant spyware or drop a rootkit, but usually it requires us to get somebody to click on something. Once they've clicked on the malicious payload, then the attacker gains access to the system and can release the hound. Hackers. A hacker is a person with excellent computer skills and ability to explore computer software and hardware. Hackers have different intentions. Some hack as a hobby, trying to see how much they can compromise and gain knowledge. Others have malicious intentions, using hacking to steal business data and personal information. There are many types of hackers, including black hats, white hats, gray hats, and suicide hackers. Black hats, or crackers, are focused on malicious or destructive activities. White hacks, or security analysts, use their professed hacking skills for defensive purposes. Gray hats are individuals that hack both offensively and defensively as they like. Suicide hackers are individuals who work for a cause and will take down critical infrastructure unconcerned about the repercussions. All hackers have numerous skills that go beyond software, databases, coding, and networking. Hackers must also have creativity, problem-solving skills, perseverance, and patience to be any good at hacking. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please visit www.cyberprotex.com or email training at cyberprotex.com. We've received a lot of questions about what are the penalties under state or federal law for computer hacking. First, let's define what hacking is. Hacking is accessing someone's computing device without authorization. It's really that simple. So those of you who have asked us if it's okay if if you can hack into Fortnite or League of Legends or any other type of games that are out there, the answer is no. Unless you have the permission to perform hacking techniques, you will go to jail if you attempt to hack into a computing device that you do not own. So keep that in mind. Someone who hacks into another person's computer could be punished by a number of different crimes depending on what the circumstances are. The law punishes hacking under the computer crime statutes. 
These crimes carry penalties ranging from a Class B misdemeanor, which is punishable by up to six months in prison, up to a $1,000 fine or both, and can also range from penalties for the crime to a Class B felony, punishable up to 20 years in prison and a fine up to $15,000 or both. So a number of applicable crimes could also apply. In addition to criminal penalties, the law specifically authorizes someone harmed by a computer or unauthorized use to bring a civil lawsuit against the perpetrator. These civil actions are in addition to any other grounds for civil action and that the injured party may have. So you could be punished not only by a criminal act of going to prison, but you could also be sued legally and held responsibly for a monetary value in civil court as well. So keep that in mind as you go through and we explain some of these different techniques that you're about to learn today if you already don't know them. So this next segment we're going to call Hollywood versus Reality, where we play a video of either a movie or something that we see on TV, and then I'm just going to give you some comments based off of my expertise in the cybersecurity field. Let's go ahead and get this first video. This is from the Black Hat movie in 2014 and hacking the NSA scene. So go ahead and roll the footage. All right, so this dude looks like he is... Uh, He's Mr. Fancy Pants with the tie on. Says something here about Black Widow remote logins. We strongly suggest you change your password. Sounds like a phishing attempt right here. PH phishing. All right, that looks like Thor. Thor is one of the stars in this more movie here. Oh, he's going to click the button. So the phishing attempt. Oh, it worked. It worked here. So now with the click event... The attacker can get remote access to this person's machine here. So he sees, uh, he launched some sort of remote program that will allow to him to, um, oh, it looks like he has great fingernails here. And it looks like the remote program that was launched is a keystroke monitor. And that's a great looking view from under the keyboard. So he changes into a new password, which is still pretty secure, it looks like. But since he was able to get him to click on that uh, PDF, now that click event launched this Black Widow, uh, Black Widow uh, program that looks like now the hackers have full access or full control to this guy's machine because he clicked on it. So that's kind of interesting. That looks like it could be real. We get a lot of people in the penetration testing or vulnerability assessments that we do we do a technique called phishing, where we'll actually uh, attempt to get people to send uh, or click on emails that we send out to them that are very attractive emails. So that seems like it's mostly real. Whether or not that would actually happen in, uh, with the NSA, um, that would be the, the, big, the big question. All right, what's next? Okay, so this looks like it's from uh, War Games. And uh, it says Hacking the School. This is from 1983. So uh, this is a great movie if you've never seen it. I rec definitely recommend it. This is uh, Matthew Broderick and some old school computing techniques here. Let's go ahead and roll the footage. Really computer. Yeah. Oh, so he's got a floppy disk here. That's what we used to use uh, back in the olden days. Oh, and he's using his, uh, looks like a 56K modem here that we had to use in order to uh, dial into the Internet. And then that, uh, oh, he looks like he's already got access to the, oh, my goodness. He's using a pencil. The user password is pencil for whoever enters the, the grays into the computer. That's not a strong password. Looks like he's typing in his, uh, his student name here. Let's see what his grades are. Oh, boom. Those are ugly grades. I don't think that I deserve this. You? Oh, he's got an F and something. Oh, in biology, too. Oh, he changes it to a C. Okay, well, uh, you know, how realistic is this right here? I don't know. I think that there's a lot of different things that you would need here in order to make this magic happen. Um, back then, it was probably more uh, capable of doing something like this. Nowadays, a lot of times, the grading systems are... Uh, hidden behind firewalls, and teachers will have to log in. 
Uh, typically, teachers use strong passwords, so you'd have to know where that new system is, like in, in everyday schools that you, you attend or your kids attend. We'd have to know where that server is. We'd have to know um, user IDs and passwords if we were trying to use this, this technique, or we'd have to know what type of vulnerabilities that, uh, that server has in order to try to uh, attack and, and see if we could actually get access to it. Uh, and then we'd have to obviously know exactly where to go to uh, update a, a grade as well. So, okay, that's, that's a great clip. All right, what do we have on the, on the uh, queue for the next one? All right, so this looks like it's uh, NCIS, a popular law show, uh, and it says hacking. So it looks like we're going to get an intrusion detection here. So let's go ahead and roll that, uh, that, that footage here. Go ahead. Oh, firewall breach. Oh, she's getting hacked. Oh, it's major. That thing looks like it's going berserk. She's typing something. It doesn't show you what she's typing. Oh, both of them are typing now. We're getting a double whammy. Two people on the keyboard at the same time. Oh, my goodness. Oh, boy. They're in trouble. They're in big, big trouble. They're getting hacked. Mark Harmon's going to come out and save the day. This dude's uh, he's eating his ham sandwich. Um, I'm not sure what they're going to do. I can't really tell exactly everything that they're doing. Uh-oh. Looks like the denial of service attack happened. Directly affects availability. Let's check it out. What, what happened? Oh, he pulled the power cord. Okay. So, you know, for Hollywood, that seems like it could be um, entertaining. We didn't really see how the intrusion detection came in there. Um, if you have an intrusion or a breach in your firewall, and you're, um, you can afford an intrusion detection system, then hopefully it's configured well enough to be able to alert you that there is an, an intrusion actually happening. Um, in this particular case, it didn't say exactly what, what the issue was, but her machine seemed like it was going absolutely insane there with all sorts of crazy stuff popping up on there. Um, so that could actually happen in real life, would it? If you don't have a firewall, if you don't have an intrusion detection system, then you probably wouldn't see any alerts coming through. Um, but definitely the denial of service where all the availability, your machine would be unresponsive, that definitely would happen. If you did unplug it during an event like this, then it's likely that you would lose all forensic evidence data and usually that is not best practice to turn the power off. Um, so something like that could happen, but uh, all three of these really are great tidbits that um, we definitely could uh, learn a lesson from. Some of them could happen in real life, but majority of them probably not. Thanks for watching this segment. Welcome to Family Feud. I'm your guy, Cliff Stevens, and we have a show for you today. Over on the one side, we have the Black Hats. And over on the other side, we have the White Hats. All right, if both teams are ready, send me one over. Let's go ahead and start the feud. We asked 100 people, what are the common targets for hackers? I think it's the dark web. Show me the dark web. All right, White Hat, over to you. You still can beat it. I think it is Facebook. <laughs> all right, all right. So Facebook, let's go ahead. Show me Facebook. All right, congratulations, White Hats. You want to play? Okay, let's look, let the White Hats play. All right, what are the common targets for hackers? Well, Cliff, I think it's fishing. Oh, <laughs> so you're going to tell me that you're going to take a fishing pole and go out to the lake and you're going to fish for the common targets? Oh, man, you crazy. All right, show me fishing. All right, so... What common targets do hackers look for? Meetings? 
Show me meetings. Okay, White Hats, one strike against you. What are the common targets that hackers look for? I think it's the shopping mall, Cliff. Okay, well, show me the shopping mall. Oh, two strikes against you now, White Hats. One more strike, and the Black Hats can steal. What are the common targets that hackers look at? My house? Show me my house! Oh, I'm so sorry. You have three strikes. Now the Black Hats can steal if they answer correctly. Black Hats, what are the common targets for hackers? We think it's guess or luck. Okay, show me guess or luck! Yeah! You win, Black Hats, you win! All right, what were the other two answers up there on the board? Misconfiguration, of course. And the last one? Weak passwords, of course. All right, well, we hope that you enjoyed this Family Feud Cybersecurity Edition. Thank you to the White Hats and the Black Hats for participating today. We hope to see you next time here on Cybersecurity Family Feud. Well, thank you for attending today. We hope you enjoyed it. Again, I'm Ben McGee. You can reach out to me if you have any questions or concerns on anything that you've seen today, or maybe you want to take some training, or uh, you need help with some software, or just uh, with risk management in general. Again, if you're not authorized to attack or try to hack into somebody's system, there are penalties for that, and you will go to jail. So do not hack or attempt to hack gaming servers or corporations or the like if you do not have permission to do so. We hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you next time on the Got Cyber Show.